Friction. The most misunderstood term. Poor guy. Everyone thinks friction is negative. People are not getting along. They have friction among each other. Countries are not getting along. The diplomatic relations have friction among each other. There is friction between this. There is a friction between that. Friction is beautiful. Friction is peace loving. Yes, it is rough around the edges. Yes, it has some, some shortcomings. Who doesn't? Who is perfect? Nobody. Yet one more example of why friction is misunderstood. Why do you think your shoes get old? Why do you think there is a wear and tear in your foot to wear? Clear cut blame, friction. Okay, not completely wrong there. But how do you think you are able to walk? What makes you walk? Sir, our feet, uh, the strength in our feet makes us walk. Eh, no. What happens on a very slippery icy surface? What? Your feet become weak, your legs become weak? Do you suddenly lose the lower body strength? <laughs> what happens? Why do you walk very, very carefully if the floor is wet? Is it because your legs start losing strength? No. Understand the physics behind walking. When you walk, friction acts on your legs, on you. Where do you think it acts? Forward or backward? What do you think? Basically, if you zoom in to the contact between your feet and the ground, you push the ground backwards. As a result, the ground pushes you forward. Watch. Look, I'm standing straight. Right? If I push the ground down, that means doing the parade at the very spot. Can you visualize? I, I know you can't see me doing stomping the ground. But imagine, parade... Left, right, left, right, left, right, parade, thumb. What does the parade do? Parade stomps, stomps the ground down, down, down. The parade is not going forward. Why? Because you are pushing the ground down. But if you want to go forward, what do you do? You take a stride, you lean forward, you push the ground back, the ground pushes you forward. Watch. The contact force between you and the ground is in such a way that the ground gets pushed this way and the contact force on you is tilted forward. And you know that it has two components. One perpendicular and one parallel. And what is the perpendicular component called? Normal reaction. And what is the parallel component called? Friction. Correct? So in fact, friction is the component which is in forward direction while you walk. And that is the reason why you are able to walk. So what happens? What happens in icy surfaces, slippery surfaces? The friction coefficient is so small that the friction value is decreasing. That's one of the reasons. Of course, when you take a bigger stride, have you noticed on slippery surface, the only way to actually be stable and still be able to move forward is to take baby steps. You don't take a big stride. Why is that? I will explain that later. Think about it. The question is, why do you take small steps, baby steps on an icy surface or on a slippery surface? Think about it. But right now, the physics of walking is, take a stride, lean a little forward, push the ground back, the ground pushes you forward, and the component which is along your line of motion is who? The good old friction. The poor misunderstood friction. Friction is the reason why you walk. Friction is the reason why cars are on the road. What happens? What do you think makes a car move? Sir, engine. Ah, sir, engine. No. A Maserati is a Maserati. A Ferrari is a Ferrari because of engine. Fair enough. But what does, the, what, what does it take to make a car move on the road? If you have a Ferrari, if you have a McLaren, if you have a Maserati, if you have a Lamborghini, but the surface which on which it is kept is completely frictionless and there is zero friction, then you can rev up the car, vroom, vroom, it will not go forward. Because friction is the reason why it goes forward. 
Do you understand? We'll talk more about it as we go along. Poor guy, isn't it?